So, StripesHype.com talks about three players who could be cut to save money for the cap, and possibly Cincinnati could go after. Now, here's all the players. We're talking about their stats, who they played for, all that kind of good stuff as always. But let's go ahead and start off with the first player they list. Khalil Mack, who is an edge rusher. The Chargers currently have the fourth worst salary cap situation in the NFL heading into the 2023 NFL season. The team has negative 19 million balance. And that that's because of the giving franchise quarterback Justin Herbert a massive extension, possibly this offseason. Since Khalil Mack has a $27.4 million contract and $9 million in dead money, cutting or trading him would save them $18.4 million. Now, I know Tom Boyd would absolutely destroy my mind if I ever said they should sign a 32-year-old patch rusher. And he is actually 32, he's going into the season being 32-year-old pass rusher. But I'm actually, surprisingly enough, not completely against this. Now, I think the number one need, obviously, for the Bengals is going to be some type of pass rush, right? They're going to have to get after the quarterback. That's something that they need to improve this next season. While they need to improve the offensive line, they need to improve the secondary, they need to, well, not really secondary, they just need to work out the fact that they're going to lose Jesse Bates. They need to work on a fourth, fifth cornerback slot. Pass rusher is definitely a huge need for them. While I understand the idea of trying to go after someone who actually has a big name, you know, and was an amazing pass rusher for a very long time, I'm still going to stick with the guns and say Joseph is the guy I think can step up next year and be an absolute star for you guys. But if you can get Khalil Mack at a discounted price or a pretty solid price, he's very consistent when it comes to staying on the field. He's played, what, out of all his years, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seasons he's played complete, no injury, <laughs> not missing one said game. He is still a star. He still has a lot left in the tank to get after quarterbacks. And this would be a player at 32 years old. You could get him for a lot less than you could get, for example, Yannick Aguakwe. So if you get him, you're using him as a rotational guy. I wouldn't really be against the idea of targeting him. Um, it would just have to be the right price. That's really what this would come down to. It's one of those things where it's like, okay, well, we wouldn't mind having him, but he would have to come at the correct price. And I don't know if you're going to be able to get him for a discount or a huge discount. Again, you could work in the fact that, listen, you're not going to win a Super Bowl unless you join our team. And we have the best potential chance to win a Super Bowl. We also have a really good defense coordinator. Lou could be an absolute monster for him. Uh, you know, the mad scientist. So maybe that kind of convinces him or persuades him to go toward the jungle. But it's one of those guys where, you know, when you see the guy's name, you're like, this is potentially okay, a potentially good fit. But it would have to be at the correct price tag. That's all this would be is the correct price tag. The second player they list is Shaq Griffin. The UCF product will soon enter the final season of his three-year $40 million contract. Though the Jags could free up some space, much needed finances by releasing him, the defensive cap hit of 17.2 mil, but Jacksonville would take a $4 million in dead money if it cuts him. Absolutely no. Absolutely no. I think he's a really solid player, and he's going to have a very good rest of his career. He's going to be an absolute monster for the rest of his career. He's 28 years old. This guy is going to continue to progress, continue to get better. Absolutely no. There's not even a question in my mind. It, the amount of money he's going to cost to go ahead and get, first off, he's going into his final year of his, uh, what, his contract, right? He's going to want big, big money. Like, I don't think... Some people understand the fact that Cincinnati is not going out there. After they sign Joe Burrow to his extension, they're not going out there just saying, oh, well, you know what? <laughs> Let's go broke. Let's go broke. Let's go ahead and just spend a billion dollars out here in free agency. No. Cincinnati is not stupid. They're very smart and precise with the players they sign and the players they target. 
this would be reckless. And even if reckless happened, they still probably wouldn't get this guy. They have to bring back Jermaine, Frow uh, Jermaine Pratt, uh, Flowers. They got to bring back Von Bell. They got to bring back some other players too. This would not make sense for them to go all out and give him a huge crazy contract. And even then, I just don't even think he's that great. I really don't. I mean, he played five games last season. Obviously, he could have injured 14 games, 12 games, 14. He really hasn't. He played one complete season his whole entire career. And he was, if I believe so correctly, says a third round pick. So, it's definitely a no for me, Chief. It's a no for me. The last player is probably the most reasonable player. And that is Donovan Smith. The Bucks are expected to release left tackle Donovan Smith by March 15th in move to clear some salary cap space and explore moving Tristan Wirfs, a two-time Pro Bowl right tackle, to the left side to replace him. Smith has been a starter since draft in the second round in 2015 and has started 124 games to Tampa Bay. He turns 30 in June and has a cap value of $19.7 million this year. Tom? Calm down. He's not 30 until June. If you sign him in March, you're signing him when he's 29 years old. So therefore, the Cincinnati Bengals rule of no one over 30 works out very well. Now, on a real note though, I'm not against this idea. 30-year-old left tackle, right? Obviously up there in age, let's be honest. But... For offensive linemen, that's fine. You know, shelf life for a running back is usually 30. Shelf life for a receiver is 32-33. And quarterback at this point now is about to be 70 with, you know, how Tom Brady went. But when it comes to offensive linemen, it's almost like the fine wine. They get better with age. So you could realistically make the argument that a you could have an MVP offensive lineman who's 33-34 years old. Trent Williams is still a really solid, amazing left tackle, and he's 34 years old. So this is not bad at all. A 30-year-old, plenty of experience, literally has not missed many games at all in his whole entire career. I mean, how beautiful is that for Cincinnati to get somebody who really hasn't missed many games and has the potential to be an absolute star for you? Price tag's going to cost a lot, though. Price tag is going to cost a lot. And this is just like Cleo Mack. I'm going to say it again. It depends on the price tag. The price tag will dictate this completely. If the price tag is right, the player is a yes. If the price tag is wrong, the player is a no. You're, he's not getting $18 million a year. If we're being honest here, I'm probably putting a price tag. Uh, possibly... 9, 10 a year. And I'm fine with that. Bring him in. Jonah Williams, you're a backup. Moved on. Right tackle in the draft. Moved on. These are three interesting players. Definitely three interesting players. I will say, last time we talked about something crazy where it came to, like, Darren Waller and Jalen Ramsey being traded to the Bengals. Like, that stuff was just ridiculous. This made a lot more logical sense, but still, it is what it is. Guys, tell me down below your thoughts and opinions. See you guys in the next one. Peace out.